All right, now the fourth devil, which we can all guess, but he passed away, and there's a very good chance that he's saved. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. There's a very good chance that he's saved, which I give him the benefit of the doubt. If people think differently, hey, you know, uh, that's your right to think so. That's possible. He may, not, he may not be saved. He probably faked it all the way. But here's something very interesting about Billy Graham. So uh, I already did two videos on Billy Graham, so I don't have to give all the details on this. But I would like to give a perfect description of Billy Graham at his beginnings that matches with 2 Peter 2. Okay? These false, Billy Graham is no stranger to fulfill all of these, and I don't need documentations to prove that. We've seen where he's connected with Masons. He was, uh, he was celebrated in the Catholic, one of the Catholic schools. He held hands with Muslims and Catholics. He spoke at their conferences. He gets along with everybody. But look at 2 Peter chapter 2, what it says about these false prophets, right? There's a verse that I didn't read yet. Billy Graham fulfilled all those things about a false prophet. But look at this. In verse 20, what was their beginning? For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, see that? They got saved from the world, and they got saved through knowing Jesus Christ. But look, they are again what? Entangled therein they, and overcome. The latter end is what? Worse with them than the beginning. Yeah, Billy Graham, he knew God and all that, which is going to be interesting that I'm going to show you, but now his end became worse than the beginning. This guy is worse than all three put together. This guy is worse than all three put together. Look at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the what? Way of righteousness. Then after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Wow. That's a perfect description of Billy Graham at 2 Peter chapter 2. Now, if this has any reference to salvation, then praise the Lord Jesus Christ, it does not apply to us today. Because 2 Peter is an application to the tribulation time period, as well as Matthew chapter 24. This is not applied for us today. This is applied for the tribulation. But see, because this is applied to the tribulation, we can get clues today on certain people that's heading toward here. All right, so anyways, Billy Graham, here are some interesting things about him. Before he became one world, before he became that false prophet, and he would have been a great candidate of the false prophet in the tribulation, actually. So Billy Graham, some things about him. You know how he got saved? Under Mordecai Ham's preaching. One. Mordecai Ham is, did you know Mordecai Ham's story? This guy is worse than Dr. Peter S. Ruckman in, in preaching style. He would go to an atheist and say, I'm going to pray for God to kill you or to save you. I recommend watching the movie about Billy Graham, his younger years. That movie, I really enjoyed it. It shows an uh, actor playing out as Mordecai Ham, pointing out at somebody, and then, you know, pointing his finger at Billy Graham and saying, you son, you look like that you need Jesus Christ. And then Billy Graham got under conviction and he got saved. Another thing, another thing is that Billy Graham, he started to enter Bob Jones College under Bob Jones Sr. in 1936. He started a small church in a suburb of Chicago. That was where Billy Sunday and Moody, their heyday of revival, was located at. Not only that, he also did street preaching in his early years. And the movie will also show you Billy Graham's street preaching. And he led a, a black person who was sitting on the corner and said, do I... Uh, do I need Jesus? I mean, will Jesus really help me? And Billy Graham led him to Jesus Christ over there. How about that? This was him back then. Also, uh, Billy Graham, he was a friend of William B. Riley. He's a famous, one of the, during the Great Awakening eras or the latter end of them, uh, founding Northwestern schools, Christian schools at that time, William B. Riley. Not only that, he was a member of the cooperating board of the Sword of the Lord. Sword of the Lord is the top IFB fundamentalist magazine today. He was a cooperating member of that. 
Not only that, he was honored with a degree from Bob Jones University. He was honored with a degree from them. Another thing is Oswell J. Smith, my utmost for the highest. Oswell J. Smith, who wrote that, my utmost for the highest. This is what Oswell J. Smith said of Billy Graham. Quote, again and again, he urged the, convert, the converts to get linked up with some Bible-believing church where Christ is preached. <laughs> a well-known Methodist pastor, his name is Bob Schuler. That's not the same as this idiot, okay? So Bob Schuler, he was, uh, he was known as Fighting Schuler or something like that during the era of the, the, near the end of the Great Awakening. He said this, none of the great evangelists had ever before accepted the sponsorship of modernists because during Billy Graham's day, that's when modernism was growing, right? Billy himself had not only refused to hold a campaign under their sponsorship, but had openly declared that he never would. In his Los Angeles campaign, I personally saw and heard him turn down and politely decline the approval and cooperation of the Church Federation, which represented the Federal Council, now the National Council. Hard to believe, right? Hard to believe. What happened to him? What happened to him? Here's a story, which I can't confirm, but Dr. Uckman, one time when Bob Jones University was being filled out to the full, and that's when Dr. Uckman was attending the school that time, Billy Graham was speaking there. But then it was so filled out, so a lot of them can't go inside. So Dr. Uckman, he had to sneak through the air vent and through the air vent, he was listening to Billy Graham preach, and that's where he got under conviction, and he, he wanted to become an evangelist. So before he became a Bible teacher, he was an evangelist. Not only that, I cannot confirm this, but also Billy, the Billy Graham crusade, they actually contacted Dr. Upman when he used to be an evangelist, and they wanted him to do that chalk talk and to join them when Billy Graham's preaching throughout his crusade. Look at Billy Graham, how he was back then. Now, who? a lot of people never heard of Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. You know why? He didn't go with the flow of popularity and adoration. And a lot of people don't know him. You mentioned Billy Graham? Quite an opposite. Everyone knows who he is. May 30th, 1997. What did Graham say in an interview with David Frost? I feel I belong to all the churches. I'm equally at home in an Anglican or Baptist or a Brethren Assembly or a Roman Catholic Church. And the bishops and archbishops and the Pope are our friends. You know what John R. Rice said? John R. Rice, he was the king. He was one of the kings of fundamentalism that time. John R. Rice. He's a founder of the sword of the Lord. You know what John R. Rice said about this interesting in incident about Billy Graham when he switched from fundamentalist to what? New World Order. Quote, this is what John R. Rice said. I talked with Dr. Graham again and again about the danger of yoking up with modernism. Again and again, he assured me that he had vowed to God he would never have a man on his committee who was not right on the inspiration of the Bible, the deity of Christ, and such matters. I visited Dr. Graham in his own home in Montreat, North Carolina, by his invitation. And we talked earnestly on such matters. Again and again, we have talked by long distance telephone, sometimes as long as 30 minutes. At his own request, we sent him the Sword of the Lord airmail, week after week in his tour around the world. I wrote him in great detail on matters where I thought he was wrong. And all the time I defended him openly and publicly, excusing all his mistakes, until he openly declared he had decided to keep company with modernists and put them on his committees and to go under their sponsorship. Then I was compelled, in order to be true in Christ, to come out openly against that compromise. The issue is not Billy Graham. I have loved him through the years. I have prayed for him daily for many years. The warm-hearted, friendly Cliff Barrows, the beloved Beverly Shea, the dear friend Jerry Beaven, and the assistant Grady Wilson. God knows how I have prayed for them all. I did all that a good man could do privately to help keep Billy Graham for the historic Christian position and for working with Bible-believing Christians instead of unbelievers. 
I like to close with Billy Graham as the perfect false prophet as the conclusion at the end. That's why I strongly believe that the, one of the best candidates for the false prophet for the New World Order is a guy like Billy Graham. It's a guy like Billy Graham. These three, they definitely fit the category, but you definitely have to be a Billy Graham to get the adoration of the world, to have Masonic elites, uh, the Jewish elites, the Catholic elites to join together. You have to get someone like Billy Graham. Not only that, someone who knows a little bit about the fundamentalist Bible-believing movement, knows how their mind works, knows how their mind works. Matthew 24, shall we close? These are four demonic pastors sent from hell and how the mighty have fallen and how the devil has used them. That's why by the grace of God, I don't care if I lose more subscribers, this pastor cannot compromise no matter what. Amen, man. Satan wants Bible-believing preachers and he will use them no matter what to accomplish his goal. Matthew chapter 24. Verse 24, for there shall arise false Christ and who? False prophets. false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders in so much that it were possible. They shall deceive who? The very, the very elect. What a, what a sad, sad day. What a sad, sad day. Verse 11 of Matthew 24, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. These are four pastors sent from hell. Avoid them at all costs. Two of them are still running powerfully. But you also got other pastors out there. Bill Hybels, Andy Stanley, and etc. These guys, mega churches are growing. And they're becoming more and more worldly. False prophets in the last days. That's how they deceive people. That's how they build a movement. That's why everyone is going to prepare for the new world order. You know why? When people hear preaching, they don't expect preaching like to be ours. When they hear preaching, you know what they expect normally? This kind. They brainwashed our world. They think preachers and preaching is like this.